Hello, and welcome to Death is Swallowed Up in Victory Ministries. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Price, and today's message is truth, and does it really matter? Hello and welcome to Death is Swallowed Up in Victory Ministries. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Price. And today's message is truth and does it really matter? And today I'm only going to take just a few minutes to make this video. Uh, I just wanted to share some truth with you. Again, I find truth to be so comforting. And this truth, though, I think it's earth shattering. It's world shattering. I mean, if this ever hit the mainstream uh, uh or mainstream Christianity, I think we would be in shock and also embarrassed that we haven't noticed this in the past. But I do believe that it's an effort uh, by the secular world to try to take uh, things that uh, actually show and, and give evidence to Christ's divinity, um, that they try to take that and they try to hide that. And that's really what's happened here with this, this painting. I, and I'm really looking forward to sh sharing this with you. Again, I came across this as I, um, I'm, I'm praying for truth and I'm praying for wisdom. And if you remember from my vision, I was looking for a vessel of Christian origin uh, in the scriptures. So I had the vision and, and, and I go to the scriptures and I, I need to find out what happened to Jesus after he had risen from the dead and before he or up to his ascension, I should say. So I really got familiar with the ending of the, the four Gospels. And uh, and again, I was researching anything I can find, not only in, in the scriptures, but also in the historical record. Could I find anything that spoke of some type of vessel of Christian origin that maybe had been forgotten? Well, I was led to um, Leonardo uh, da Vinci's... Uh, it's called the Da Vinci Code. It was by a book by, and movie by Dan Brown. And, and the way I got there is that there was a vessel of Christian origin. It was the Holy Grail. And they used this painting to say that Mary Magdalene was the Grail and that Jesus was married to her. And, uh, and they really tried to take divinity away from Christ. Well, again, as I was watching this, uh, and it's really, the movie was done in such a way uh, that it was written as fiction, the book was, but it claimed historical facts. A very strange thing to do. And again, it was an attempt to take divinity away from, from Jesus. Also, the elites, they're always trying to take history's finest, uh, the finest artists and, and minds and thinkers uh, of, of the old, and they, they try to put them in the category of non-believers. But tonight, we're going to restore Leonardo da Vinci's reputation as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus Christ. And I, I know that you're going to see this here. I'm also, I'm asking, I want some feedback here. Let me know. Uh, I'm not going to take very long with this video at all. It's so easy to see uh, that this scene, uh, Leonardo da Vinci intended to depict a scene of the risen Christ. These are the events that are, are detailed in the scriptures of the risen Christ. So let's get into this. Um, if you notice here in the painting, I've replaced what's faded away in the painting. Uh, if you notice here that I've put the holes here in Jesus's hands. And let's just get right into this. Doesn't it make a ton more sense when you look at the, the painting? There's, okay, they say this is Judas. And Judas, this is the Last Supper. And uh, he, this is the Passover meal before Jesus was crucified. And that's Judas in the background. And he's saying, Lord, is it I that will be, betray you? Now, what's interesting about that, if you really, if you look at the, the reaction of all of the disciples, I don't think that scene really fits um, for a couple of reasons, too. First of all, you see Jesus as he has his hand laid upon the table. And who else? Who else or who in the scriptures um, um, was there a story about his finger? If you remember, it was Thomas. Remember Thomas, uh, 
Uh, he was the one who said, I will not believe unless I reach my finger in the holes of his hand. Well, if you notice here, um, his finger is up and Jesus has his hand laid upon the table. Also to the other side here, uh, we see that there appears to be a woman at the table. And the, the elites, they will say that, you know, Da Vinci painted this. It's actually, that's St. John. He was feminine looking. Uh, but we know that's not true. That's obviously a woman there. Uh, they needed to try to make the story fit. But if you read the, and we're going to go through this really quickly, but if you read the ending of each of the four Gospels, you'll see Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene first. She was the one that was told, go to go to my disciples and tell them I'm headed to Galilee and, and there that they will meet me. So she was the first one and that puts, and, and she was told to gather the disciples. So that puts her at the table uh, with the disciples and Jesus. Also notice the uh, hands that are reaching across here. And again, I've heard some different theories to, to why that that's happening. Uh, but we know it from scripture. Again, Leonardo knew his, his, his uh, Bible. And if you look here, what's happening is Jesus says, reach your finger here and then put your hand here or in, depending on the, the scripture or the translation or thrust your hand into my side. Uh, again, it was the two, it was the wounds that he had, the holes in his hands and, and where the, he was pierced in his side. So, uh, Let's go a little bit further here and see if we can find some more evidence of that. If you remember in the scripture, it's very, this is very key too. Uh, the scripture says that there's nothing hidden or, or secret that's not going to be revealed. And uh, and I would tell you that that the Da Vinci Code, uh, the book, it's no exception to the, to the word of God. I, I'm telling you, he said it. There's nothing that's going to be hidden that's not going to come to light. And, uh, and that book is no exception uh, to uh, God's word. If you notice here, uh, the painting is, is more faded here. This is after one of the restorations. Um, and you can see that, again, I've replaced the holes in his hand. Um, and the, this painting, it's, it was painted on a wall. Uh, and it's, it's faded and been restored many times. Also, his feet used to be seen here. This was a doorway or something that they put uh, they they knocked into that wall. Um, let's go ahead, forward just a little bit. Also, this is the painting as it appears now uh, after the the last restoration. And I began to to really look for evidence. Was there evidence that there was once holes in his hands? And uh, if we we zoom in here just a little bit, I, you know I can see two areas that it looks like. Uh, there may have been the original holes in the painting. You can see here and also here. I, I couldn't tell which one it was. I just knew that it absolutely looked. I know that this is a scene of the, the risen Christ. There's, there's no question. It is absolutely biblical. Uh, it's absolutely biblical. Now, where those holes are in his hand, uh, that became very important to me. And I prayed earnestly. I said, hey, you know, Lord, was it was it in the palm of your hand or was it in the uh, or was it in the wrists? What's unique about that, and I'll show a picture of this, but my first uh, born daughter, uh, as I'm studying this and I'm asking the Lord, she's born with the perfect birth birthmark, and it's right here in her wrist, and I'll put a picture up here in just a second. Uh, again, we have a God who answers prayer. Uh, he's supernatural in nature, and he can do, he can do things just like that. Um, let's go ahead. Let's go forward just a little bit. Also, uh, you can see here, this is uh, before the, the last restoration. And if you can see here, again, in the hands, you can see areas that look like they're, you could probably see the, the holes from the past. Also, as we get into a little bit of the scripture, um, in John 20, 27, you notice here, uh, then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here, and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Again, just look at this scene. It is absolutely obvious. Reach your hands here. Uh, you can see, uh, put your finger here. He's got his hand on the table. This this disciple here just looks shocked as he's, he's moving back. 
uh, and has his arms out. So this is, again, this is not hard to see. Uh, my amazement is, is that someone hasn't captured or caught this before. Uh, because again, I just, I had a, a pretty good understanding of the end of each of the four gospels. And, and, and I'm watching this, this uh, uh, movie, if you will. And I'm thinking to myself, well, there was another meal. What, what about that other meal? And, and it seems to fit perfectly. Uh, I know it fits perfectly. There's no seams about it. Um, also, I put a box around this so I could remember to share with you. You know, there's a traditional Passover meal that if, you know, when Jesus, before he was crucified, he has this Passover meal with his disciples. If I remember correctly, it was eaten in the evening. It's amazing here, too, that I don't think people put together, but in the in the windows back here, daylight is depicted. And, and Jesus meets with his disciples. It's, it's in the day. Also, a traditional Passover meal consists of certain foods. As you see here, you, you know, there's a, a boiled egg, there's uh, the lamb, uh, there's the bitter herbs, and, and so forth. But on the table, you'll see, um, you know, as they're looking at the secrets and, and, and trying to find out all they can about this painting, they noticed that they're actually eating fish on the table. In fact, there's some um, disagreement. Is it eel or is it herring that they have on the, on the table? Uh, but if you notice here in John, Luke, 24, uh, you can see here, it says, behold, my hands and my feet, that it is myself, handle me, see, for I am, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see, I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And then he said to them, have you any food here? And so they gave him a piece of boiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and he ate it in their presence. Again, this is the risen Christ. Uh, uh, the risen Christ who's sitting down with his disciples and he's eating fish. And here Leonardo da Vinci has fish on the table. How amazing is that and how simple it is if you have a, just a, a very elementary understanding of this, the ends of the, of the Gospels. Um, also in Mark 16, um, again, I think that Leonardo da Vinci, I really believe that he took a little bit of each of the the, um, the four Gospels and, and, and got a picture of what was going on. But you see here that uh, Mary Magdalene is told to go to Galilee and, and, and said that the Lord would, would be there. And then when they heard that uh, he was alive and he had been seen by her, they did not believe. Again, this is Thomas uh, also did not believe. And then uh, later he appealed, appeared as, uh, okay, Later, he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Again, he sits with the eleven at the table. This scene, this scene is a depiction of the risen Christ. So it doesn't matter. Again, the holes of his hands that are missing from the most famous painting in the entire world, a Christian painting, it's ours. It's a scene that depicts Jesus Christ, either before he was crucified or after he was risen. After seeing this information, do you see that this is a scene that depicts the risen Christ? And that's Thomas in the background or coming over to reach his finger in the uh, holes of Jesus's hand. And you can see that Mary Magdalene is there with him because she was told to gather the disciples. You can see, we know that there's fish on the table because he ate fish with his disciples after he had risen. Can you see the hands that are coming across as he says, and reach your hand here or thrust your hand into my side? Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Again, this is just, to me, it's this information uh, should really shake up the Christian community. This should hit mainstream, the mainstream news. I mean, there are so many times that people think they have found something special in this painting or something that was hidden, uh, but there's nothing hidden here. It's in plain sight. There's things that have been forgotten, and, and the very and the most important thing that's been forgotten is the holes of his hands. And it's been forgotten. It's the painting had faded, and they just painted right over it because they didn't know their scriptures. They didn't know their scriptures. Anyways, let me know what you think. Uh, as 
this is to me, it's just it's a fascinating piece of truth and and truth does matter. Um, and I'm asking you, does it matter? Is this something that you think the mainstream media would one day get a hold of? And I think it's also uh, amazing that this information is coming out of this community. You see, the Lord is sharing truth with us. And uh, and this again, this is just so special to me uh, that it's coming. It's coming out of this community. Anyways, thank you so much. Please leave your comments. Let me know what you think. And I look forward to the next video. God bless you.